thing that I praise God most for is his grace and mercy. And the word of God said his mercies are new every morning. And, and that's the beauty of God. That is the benevolence of God as our father. He doesn't count it against us. Like the pastor was saying yesterday, all that's taken care of. It's covered. And what he does, he, every day, he gives you a fresh start. You may have missed the mark yesterday. You can try to strike again today. And that's basically what it's like. You, what it's really about is learning what life's lessons are there to teach us, you know. And, and, uh, and I used to do that so often when I was young. I'd go to the mirror. I tell Deanna to do this often when she can discuss it with herself. As I had a habit of waking up looking in the mirror, I said, God, what are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to teach me so I can learn it and move on? Because life does not give social promotion. That lesson is going to come back to you in one form or the other. And then if you don't understand what the syllabus is, go to the one that's preparing the lesson and ask God, what, what are you trying to teach me? And, and listen, Holy Spirit will let you know. And sometimes it has nothing to do with what you're going through. You know, it could be something in your character that he wants to sharpen and straighten out. So he know to get you, I know what me, he knows in a minute to get my attention. Boy, I tell you about this time last year, I was brought to my knees, <laughs> I tell you. And I told him, I said, I faced many mountains, but this one here, I never saw one like this. <laughs> I, said, I said, Lord, it's been years since I actually literally got on my knees. I, you know, because I used to just walk around praying. <laughs> you know, when I was about, I was about 45, they'd have me on your knees so long in the Pentecostal churches, you get up your knees, be hurting. And then I made those little pillows, I said, uh -uh. God does not mind me walking and talking. <laughs> but I tell you, I put a stack of pillows on that floor and knelt down by my bed. I said, you got my attention now. <laughs> and I said, because that's the main thing. I said, if you did this to get my attention, hello, I know it's been a while. You know, because sometimes we, and we do, we try to keep a, an attitude of prayerfulness. But we need to move in and have those deep communions with God. So we're not doing so much talking, but we're listening. And see, that's where we miss out. You know, we think praying is, oh, you will go have a little talk with Jesus. No. Have a little listen with Jesus. <laughs> he got a lot of stuff to tell you. And this is a prayer I pray with my grandchildren every night, is that Holy Spirit will continue to develop their ears to listen. Listen to his voice. And then that he'll always let them have a tender heart to receive it, believe it, and obey it. Mm. And it's basically what it is. I have this one book I got to get into when I go back home, The Art of Listening. Just, just quiet down. That's what that meditation is all about. You know, you get people that want to condemn those Eastern religions, but they got a hook on something. Quiet yourself. Because Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. Yeah. Like I was praying the Lord's Prayer yesterday, and I was in Our Father which art in heaven, and I had my eyes on the cloud. I said, wait a minute, girl. Heaven, he's right here <laughs> in me. You know, we have a tendency to shift our consciousness beyond ourselves. And he said, behold, the kingdom of God. And what is kingdom? Kingly rule. Godly reign. It means that God, all of his power, his ability, everything that's necessary for me to fulfill my journey in there is, is resident within me. I don't have to ask for no more faith. I remember when he taught me, when he gave me you, about peace. I'd pray for peace all the time. <laughs> and I, I had as much, uh, no patience. I had as much patience as a, as a dizzy ant. And that day you were going down the line praying for people. I'm sitting with that fussing because I was 100 people on the line and I'm number 99. And he said, that's what you could have been doing. And he, I, he said, stop asking for patience because I have to keep giving you situations <laughs> that will cause you to be. And I start meditating on that thing. That's what the Beatitudes is about. Have an attitude of being. Just be it. You want faith? Be, be, be faithful. And as James said, faith without works is dead. 
Start working with what God has given you. Hmm. And every little bit, it builds your, your faith muscles. It's like going to the gym. You want joy, just be at joy, be at peace. And I know uh, several times that the Lord has spoken into my spirit. Three things that before I left last year, I was walking through the house, being by myself most of the time. I just walk and talk with God. And one day I was walking between the living room to the kitchen. And I heard his voice say, I am here. A peace went over me to know. He's, you know, it's like, hello, I'm here. And I saw Holy Spirit help me to be conscious of that. God is with me. And whatever the situation that you're going through, just be, God is. That's something I taught you and your brother when you were little, putting that thing in you, who, who your father is. God is whatever you need him to be. And then he's ever present. Everywhere, all the time, and a very present help. That's what the Bible said in time of trouble. And when he gave me that word that everything you need, God has already provided. There's a lot of stuff I think I need. And I quiet myself that if I don't have it, apparently, I don't need it now. Well, I don't need it at all. Because a lot of stuff we think we need is really our want. Think. You came to this planet just the way you're going out, naked. Now, folk will put clothes on you for people could, to re review your remains. <laughs> but you're actually going out the way you came in with nothing. Why? Because everything you needed was here before you got here. God had already planned it. And if we, if we you know, you have these people that take a vow to poverty, I think they reached that conclusion that whatever I need, it's, it's already here. It's just that a lot of stuff, especially materialistic things that weigh us down, it's like dead weight. It's almost like someone putting those uh, things on you that the gangsters, the mobsters, when they want to get rid of people, mm -hmm. they put that on them and drop them in, in the ocean out there. <laughs> 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 It's a distraction. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus made it so plain. I remember when, uh, well, I got baptized when I was 10. But then uh, we came into a deeper or fuller knowledge of God, you know, at the, the working of the Holy Spirit and stuff like that, get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And um, you, 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 we all, the young people, the, the, the mother told us to pray and, 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 uh, Ask God some questions, and we all, all of us, we were about to graduate from high school. So life, you know, who's going to be my husband or my wife or going to college or whatever, and those are the kind of prayers we took to God. We all came back to the Bible study with the same scripture. Uh, Matthew 633. <laughs> but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and these things shall be added unto you. The mother fell out. We all fell out. He gave us all the same thing. <laughs> seek to know God, to know his will, and it will be revealed in the word, and he will direct your path. And how do we miss it? We get off course. Just like that GPS you all got. You don't follow the, the little zigzag that's on there. You're going to get off course. You're going to get detoured. And we can't blame God for that. But in his infinite mercy, he has a variable set up. He still got our back. I mean, we may have, we, you know, because they say for action, every action has a consequence. We will have to reap the consequences of it. That, that's just about like getting a bad grade in class. Mm -hmm. You didn't do the math, you're going to get an F? What teacher going to give you an A just because she like you? <laughs> no, you're going to get an F. <laughs> you get a chance to do over. Mm -hmm. And as uh, Mother Man, Maya Angelou used to say, when you, you do what you know. And when you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. and, and we get that chance every day. And we just have to acknowledge God in everything.